So please welcome Bezad Avazi. Thank you, Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Is all right? Everybody hears me right? So, title of my talk is about uh, cellulose nanocrystals, or CNC, formerly known as NCC nanocrystal in cellulose. Practically, they are the same thing. Regarding my background, uh, I spent most of my life uh, serving and working with the pulp and paper. And to the extent of um, art, this is my passion. One thing that actually sits very close to my heart is serving pulp and paper. There's so much we can do, and there's so much can be done. So my home used to be Quebec. I uh, live in there. If you notice a little accent, I, I was born in Iran. But back in 83, I moved to Canada. Uh, my education was in pulp and paper, graduated from McGill University, uh, worked for a number of organizations. I also helped a number of mills, worked there, I had the pleasure of working with them. So I feel the pain they go through because the money, research, and the sweat that goes through making this simple paper is way beyond the cost that actually we pay for it. And um, as you most of you know, uh, back in late 90s and beginning of 2000, most of pulp and paper mills were succumbed to either merge or to shut down because economically they couldn't sustain. And that has to do with a lot with what it is I'd like to talk about, making novel, completely new material out of uh, simple fiber that can apply toward making the paper. So what is the role of AI Bio? I'd like to take you back a little bit in the past and tell you about a biblical story. There used to be a man, a rich man, wealthy man, had three sons. And we heard of this story. Those kids never got along, always fight about everything. Absolutely everything. The moment that the father was passing away, he called the three sons and asked someone to bring the wood sticks. He handed them, each of them on one, says, try to break it. Sure enough, they applied force and they broke it. He made that to two, so try to break it again. They applied a little bit more force, and they managed to break it. Then he handed them three. They tried really, really hard. Unfortunately, they couldn't break it. So before he passes away, he says, unity is threat. And AI Bio acts as unifying agency, not just giving away the checks. They help us bringing upstream pulp producers with downstream end users and ask us to gap, well, fill that gap and bridge between two uh, entities. They look out for different research innovations. They contact us. They engage us with a number of scientists in different universities, especially University of Alberta. And they help facilitate that novelty into the next level. So what I like to do with uh, CNC is so-called 4D, not 1D or 2D or 3D. I want the CNC to behave like the chemicals in our body, communicate, build something completely new. And I'm going to give a couple of examples of those to you. Unfortunately, he passed away. And he left behind what used to know wealth, clean energy, 17 camels. In his will, he wanted the first son to get half of those camels, Second, get one third, and the last one, the youngest, and the naughty one, one ninth. So how are you going to divide this? I want you to ponder about it, and I get the solution to you. The purpose of this slide is the wisdom that AI BioSolution brings to the table. Do we know exactly where to spend money, where to invest, how to invest, to get a maximum return on the investment, simply because of ESBA, Economic Social Benefit of Albertans. But this investment is not only limited to the Alberta. It goes way beyond our borders. So far, we managed to produce and provide CNC for a number of countries. Israel, Turkey, Japan, Brazil. Just in the name of a couple of examples I can actually think of. Number of different applications as well. Uh, athletic shoes, aerospace, uh, automotive. So let me talk about what it is, what is CNC or NCC is. If we can imagine a fiber, we can break that fiber into the smaller, smaller building blocks, so-called glucose. These are the monomeric unit that builds actually this uh, fiber. Two of these glucose can attach to the ether bond or oxygen bond called cellobias. So these cellobias are the building blocks of the CNC. So depending on what you want, you can actually treat that fiber and get different materials in nanoscale. This is what nano stands for. For those who like chemistry, 
This is the chemical structure of the uh, cellulose. The nature is built as such that every 600 angstrom, all the hydrogens, oxygen, and carbon are ordered. Because they are ordered, they are, have a crystalline structures. And then suddenly goes to the small amorphous area where this order takes place. So we learned we can use this naturally abundant biopolymers and treat them with different solutions, such as sulfuric acid, and selectively break them down into the nanostructures. Why would you want to do that? Simple. By breaking this material to nanostructures, they have different properties. The aspect ratio that is a width to the height is completely different. They are stronger than Kevlar, lighter than any material you can think. So they could be applied in biocomposite for reinforcement. They could apply in uh, concrete admixtures. They could apply for uh, aerospace, and so on and so forth. Here is an example of uh, CNC's in water solution or suspensions. One can see at 1.1%, finally at 1%, the color changes to a hue, huge color. It's kind of bluish, cloudy type structures. And we take that under microscope. What we see is grass lot like shaped material that is composed of those cellular bias units. Usually, uh, the height and the width is about uh, 15 to 10 to 15 nanometers to 100 uh, nanometers. Where do they come from? Well, we can, they can actually be extracted from the forestry or agriculture materials. Forestry is preferable ones because we have seven mills here in uh, Alberta that do produce fully bleached pulp. Two of them mechanical, of course, and uh, the rest is, I think, craft, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, however, flax and hemp can also be used. Unfortunately, when we try to uh, apply the same procedure for the hemp and flax, we got some bluish dark material simply because they contain different type chemical structures or ingredients such as wax, silicon, so on and so forth that did not provide that CNC. But eventually, when we learn how, we learn how to run, chances are we're going to take advantage of this feedstock that grows in our backyard. Applications. Obviously, it has to be a balance between the market pool in which you're producing material. And this is what we're also focusing on that area as well. So as we produce some CNC and modify that CNC as per catering for a specific application, we also engage uh, universities through different programs in order to build and create different applications. The application of CNC could be applied toward fracking, drilling oils, and as uh, far as the biomedical and cosmetic and personal care. A number of you sitting in this audience do engage us. Of course, I provide samples, and we are collaborating in creating such a world that the CNC can find a home. Another reason to this is to diversify pulp and paper uh, products. To be very honest and frank, uh, we cannot compete with other countries that the fiber grows faster and it costs cheaper. So to sustain that productivity and economics, we need to diversify our product. So a number of uh, organizations has helped us in building this pilot plant that allow us to connect between the fundamental research and the commercialization. So, Going from pilot plant to commercialization, chances are we do not have that fundamental research required for the homogeneity of the material that are going to be formed. And going from fundamental research without going through the pilot plant, chances are we don't have the uh, know-how and why-have to the prototyping of this material. So this pilot plant plays as an instrumental uh, missing link between the fundamental research and commercialization. Up to date, we have spent or Alberta government has spent $6.7 million in building this pilot plant, as you can see it. It's quite unique, one of the kind, has the capacity of producing up to 100 kilogram. At the moment, unfortunately, the yield is quite low, so the scientists are focusing on how to optimize uh, the process uh, with producing CNC at a low cost. The agencies that have provided this money is AITF, uh, you know, innovation uh, Advanced Education, IAE, uh, Western Economic Diversification, uh, of course, uh, AI Biosolutions. Uh, these people constantly work through the steering committee, working with us and some of uh, my colleagues sitting in the audience as a uh, working committee, trying to troubleshoot, brainstorm to how we're going to get this off the ground and bring it to the next level. 
Of course, we have our challenges. And this is my main talk today. My first challenge is feedstock. What type of feedstock are we going to use? Or how are we going to treat this feedstock? So during the hydrolysis with sulfuric acid, they work quite efficiently. Could be, of course, fully bleached pulp. Um, at the moment, we're working with Alpac. Uh, these are the material we use. Prior to this, we work with the dissolving pulp to make sure that we mastered all the uh, operating protocols in order to get a high and maximum yield without any surprises. We treat feedstock by fluffing it, pressing it, chopping them, to make sure during the mixture in the second level, uh, which is the two digesters, they react quite efficiently. Here we are focusing on time, temperature, and of course, uh, duration of the reaction. How much we're gonna keep it there? Too much of it, you're gonna produce those glu the, 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 glu the glucose units, which is basically sugar. Obviously, this is not what, what the target of the process is. And too little, we're gonna have lots of unreacted materials. So we wanna make sure we, we, we tweak that process to get the maximum yield possible out of those pulp and bring added value to it. Of course, we go then to the uh, center centrifuge. Uh, with centrifuge, we, we, after the quenching reaction with water, we centrifuge to remove the material that is unwanted from the material that is wanted because of the suspension. And then we do uh, microfiltration. But before doing that, we have to neutralize the acid. So we use sodium hydroxide to turn, uh, convert the acid to, to base, which is salt and water. And then we uh, do the uh, microfiltration. And then we spray dry it. At the microfiltration, uh, the idea was to, uh, rather than using tangential flow, which everything comes from the bottom up, maybe we should put a certain series of material in order to fractionate it. So uh, the, the soup that we are working with, some of the reacted, unreacted, and sugar can be separated accordingly. The one that are kind of rough, if you like, goes to the oil and gas, that is not really important. The one that is quite fine and very uh, homogeneous or uniform, it goes to the biomedical applications. These are the uh, target. Of course, they, uh, eventually, uh, we're packaging it. Uh, as we speak, uh, we have a number of activity goes on on the shelf life, uh, the uh, exposure to light, moisture, uh, as well as the handling of nanomaterials is quite important because we want to make sure we are safe around this material. Uh, and at the end, uh, all that's due not to me, but to my team, a quiet, dynamic, hardworking. Uh, you see a number of scientists uh, here. Uh, and of course, uh, our VP, Barry Mayer, and my uh, former supervisor, um, Anthony Ania, who's working right across between agriculture and food, and of course, forestry, has been instrumental working with AI Body Solution to help us move this project uh, forward. I'd like to acknowledge Alberta Pacific for providing also financial help in building that uh, pilot plan, as well as the contribution by in-kind contribution, by providing pulp and, and uh, some chemicals and consumables. Of course, AI Bio Solution, uh, thank you for having me here. Uh, it's a great honor to work with a number of people, not just writing a check. Seriously, they actually uh, go through that project very, 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 very efficiently. And uh, University of Alberta, a number of scientists that uh, they do most of uh, R&D development behind this. Uh, to this end, I'd like to... Uh, <laughs> solve the problem. And here is the wisdom that uh, AI Bio brings to the table. So what do they do? They go ahead and they borrow a camel from a neighboring uh, village, make a total of 18. So if you divide 18 by half, one third, one nine, you get nine, six, and two. If you add them up, it's a total of 17. So they return it back, they get the camel back to the uh, original owner, and they solve the problem. And this is exactly how the rule of this AI Bio solution is. <laughs> Word of wisdom. So, to this end, uh, working together, united we stand, we can enhance the possibility. Alberta is quite upfront, and I'm very, very pleased and honored to be part of this activity, as I made my uh, Alberta my home right now. So, thank you very much for your attention. Any questions, let me know. Thank you. Okay, all I ask is that when uh, Benji's up here with the last two speakers, please don't ask him, how did that camel thing work? Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure many of us are still trying to figure it out. So you say the pilot plant isn't up to capacity yet. What do you, where are the big challenges there to get it up to the 100 kilograms? Good question. Uh, 
challenge lies in two different fronts. First and foremost, the yield is quite low. So we're getting less than 50%. Any organic chemist who is sitting in the audience, that would be just absolutely not. They walk away from it. We're getting less than 50%, which that affects the cost of overall operation. Because do remember, we have to spend money on water, which is quite expensive here in Alberta, caustic or sodium hydroxide to neutralize the acid, and of course, the spray dry that consumes a lot of energy. So if we can find a way to overcome this, it helps to facilitate lower cost and of course, application developments. Unfortunately, nowadays, when we approach different uh, end users, dollar and the cost of the material is a number one priorities. So is it, is it scenario of chicken and egg? How, which yeah. one we have? So we're trying to tweak both. Um, at the moment, we're trying to make sure that the feedstock is at its optimum. The condition where acid meets the fiber to hydrolyze it is at optimum conditions. How are we going to remove the byproduct? Or how are we going to use or recycle the acid? Remove the sugars, and of course, ferment the sugars to a corresponding ethanol, so we can bring some money into it and get the cost of the whole operation to a point that actually can be feasible. Good. Thanks again, Benji. That was You're fabulous. welcome.